All right, let's talk about combining CSS selectors. So I have a simple HTML file here. Uh, there's a header, a main, a couple of headings, a bunch of paragraphs, an image. And I've got a, a, a main CSS, just a few default styles inside of there. And I've got an embedded style area here at the top where I'm going to be writing the CSS for this page. Now, in the introduction to CSS, I talked about how you could just list off a tag. So there's my paragraphs, here's my h1 tag, here's my h2 tag, and I'm creating defaults. So all h1 tags will get these styles, all h2 will get these, all paragraphs will get these. But we can combine multiple tags to be a little bit more specific. So instead of just writing h1, I can say that only h1 tags that are inside the header are going to get these styles. So I could do this. I can say h1 with a space in front of it and then header. So the last thing in the chain, this is the element that's going to get styled. The h1 is what gets styled. Let's put uh, color gold. This targets the h1 element, all h1 elements. But by putting this in front, it's only h1s that are inside of an header element. If I was to change this heading down here into an h1, it doesn't get the gold. It doesn't get the style applied because we've specified that it has to be inside the header. And it doesn't have to be just one. You can have any number of elements in front. So I can do this. I can say, if there's an h1 that's inside of a header, which is inside of the body element, which is inside the HTML element, then apply this style. We can do the same thing with the h1 that's down inside the main area. I can say HTML body main h1 color red. And there we are. So we've created this chain of CSS selectors. And it's always the last one that gets the style applied. Everything else that comes before it is simply to be more specific. When the browser reads these, it actually starts with this element. It says, OK, find all the h1 tags. Now, let's check if the h1 is inside of a main. Check if the main is inside the body. Check if the body is inside the HTML. And it doesn't have to be all of them. You can do any combination of those selectors. And it doesn't have to be just parent-child like this. The h1 is directly inside of main. I could say body. And that still works. Even though it's two levels up, it's anywhere inside the body that there's an h1 tag. This is going to apply. This is actually applying to both headings. Because both h1s are inside the body. The reason that the gold is still appearing here is that we're more specific. There's more steps in the chain. We've gone to the header h1. So at the body level, they were both red. Then we added the header in between here. We got more specific, closer to the h1 element. So this one won out. This had four element styles. This one only had two element styles. All right. Now, classes and IDs, how do they work in this? Well. We can come in here and add a class at any point. So let's create a class called Fred. And over here, I'll create a class called Simon. We don't use these yet, but I could change header. Now they're both body h1. They're at the same level. So body and h1, they're both aiming at the h1. They're both talking about being inside the body. The reason that the gold is winning out is that it's got the extra style here. Both H1s are inside the body, so the body and the H1 are applying to both of these. This one has one extra element, so it applies to both. The two, st the two element style would get applied first, and then the three. Now if I come in here and I put Fred as a class. Now we're only talking about the one that's here inside this. So let's go back to this. Those are both the same. The gold's winning out. Now if I came down here and I said Fred H1 
color green or green yellow. Now this one wins out. Classes get applied after the tag styles. So this one is considered to be more important than this one or this one. So this one is what's getting applied up here to the green. If I came down here and I said Simon H1, and we do a color Rebecca Purple, that one's going to win out because again, the class is given more importance, so it's applied after these element styles right here. Okay, now we've got one class, one element. If this was an ID instead, it would work the same way. We would just have to change the period to the hash mark. IDs, classes, elements. We can chain any number together. Now, IDs are unique, so there's only ever going to be one name for an element. But classes aren't unique. Classes can be used again and again, and we're also allowed to apply multiple classes to any element. So, I could come in here and say class Fred, and there's also going to be a class Ricky, and a class Bobby, and a class Julian. Actually, let's change Bobby to Bubbles. There we go. So I've got four classes here on this header. The H1 is inside something that's got four classes. That's perfectly valid. There's no limit to the number of classes that you can add here. How do I write that here? Now, I could do multiple ones. I've got dot Fred H1. So there could be a dot Ricky space H1. There could be a dot bubbles h1 dot julian h1 fred ricky bubbles julian they're all going to be applying to this header right here with the h1 inside of it but what if i wanted to specify that the h1 needs to be inside of something that has all of those classes or maybe three of the classes. So all three classes have to be on the parent of an H1 for a style to apply. How do I write that? What we do is, let's get rid of the extra stuff here. If I wrote it this way, with spaces, what I'm saying is the H1 has to be inside of something with the class Julian. The thing with the class Julian has to be inside something with the class Bubbles. The thing with the class Bubbles has to be inside the class Ricky. So I have to have four elements in this chain. If I add the color, uh, let's go salmon. It's not showing up here. I've still got the green. If I get rid of the space, then the salmon gets applied right there. Because no space in between them means that something has to have all of these classes. I can even add a tag in there. I can say it's got to be a header element with all three of these classes, not just one of them. It's got to be all three of them. And if this had an ID as well, let's say there's an ID Randy on this. I can add that into this chain as well. I can just come here and say Randy. There we are. So now I'm being extremely specific. I'm saying apply this color to H1 elements, but only if the H1 element is inside of a header element that has the ID Randy plus these three classes. So I've got a header with that ID. It does have those three classes. It's also got Fred, but we don't care about that one for here. And it's an H1 element that's inside of this thing. So that's how this style goes. And that's how you chain them together. If there's spaces between, we're talking about drilling down through the multiple levels. So this image, different ways we could target it. We could style just the image tag itself, or we could say P space image for images that are inside of paragraphs. We can say we want paragraphs that are inside of something with the ID Simon. 
So the style of the images that are inside of paragraphs, if the paragraphs are inside of something with the ID Simon, we could say that it has to be an, a main element with Simon, like that. We could style it that way. And then we could put body in front of that, or HTML in front of that as well. Body, main, Simon, no space between main and Simon, but space between the P and the image and the body. Every time there's a space, we're drilling down one more level in this parent-child relationship of the HTML. All right, so hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully that helps you understand the way the CSS is read and applied to the page. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.